Well, you showed a gothic arch in the uh, in the image, so I thought I would end there, right? Let's put some of these pieces together. Um, so uh, I've got a starter file, and this is from Renaissance Revit. I haven't actually looked at I looked at it this morning for the first time, <laughs> probably since I wrote Renaissance Revit. So it's been a while. Um, but here's the starter file that's included with Renaissance Revit, um, and. Uh, I'm going to give you a little backstory on this, like how this came together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete uh, all of this, right? And I'll build it over again. Um, but I'm going to take this and pull it down to maybe here. And so the first thing I show uh, how to do is to create just a simple arch family. Um, you know, arches are very common in architecture, okay? Um, certainly in historic buildings, but even in even in more modern buildings, some you sometimes see arch forms. And if you want a flexible arch, that's one of the first uh, challenges, right? So uh, I'll just do this with a uh, simple model line to keep it easy here. But um, I'm going to go to a model line and I'm going to use the start end radius arc. And actually, this is half and half. So that'd be a full half circle. So let me let me flex this down a little bit lower here. Let's do 0.75. Um, by the way, if you haven't noticed, I set the units in these files to just uh, whole numbers. Um, this is to be more friendly worldwide. It is still in feet, but it's just decimal feet. So oh, decimal feet. Uh, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, it's basically yeah. unitless, right? I just yeah. I didn't want people to be distracted by the units, so I just made it decimal so that it was easy for anybody, right? Sure, so yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, so model line here. Uh, go to arc, and I'm going to draw it from here to here to here, right? And Here's the thing. If I turn on the center mark, we could now figure out the triangles, um, go back to our cheat sheet and calculate where the center mark needs to be in order for the uh, arch to work. And if you want to do it that way, that is perfectly fine. It is absolutely okay. Um, nothing wrong with doing that. But sometimes there's a simpler approach. So without even turning on the center mark, it turns out, let's first of all, align and lock the endpoints because we're going to need to do that regardless. So, oh, this is a little, this is one thing I've noticed is different in 23. It's doing the automatic sketch dimension here. So I have to actually tab in to get the end point of the arc. That's probably what happened to me in that last file a few minutes ago. Do you see that? So that's unfortunate because I'm having to tab past the, it didn't used to do that. I don't know when they you know, quote unquote, added that feature when they quote unquote, uh, fixed what wasn't broken. Right. But, um, I'm having to tab through here and it's not letting me, let's see. Yeah. To be honest, I rarely put them on the, these automatic yeah. sketch dimensions. So Do you always turn them be... on? Uh, whenever I'm doing curves. Yes. Oh, okay. Curves. Okay. Oh, we always do it with curves. Uh, -huh. uh, sometimes other cases too, but I always do it with curves. Um, now if we were to flex this, um, it may or may not work at this point. You see what happened, right? That's not what I want because I wanted the eyebrow to stay within the rise there. Okay, so I've got the endpoints flexed, but I don't have the top of the arch. So that's where you'd have to, uh, generally you need to uh, lock down three things for a curve. And it can be any three things you want, but um, I've got two endpoints, but I need a third thing, right? Uh, so it could be the center line or it could be the radius or something like that. So, um, what I'm going to do is do another little trick that kind of breaks the rules. So I'm going to start adding a dimension from down here, and I'm going to dimension directly to the geometry. Now, normally, we uh, we tell people not to do this in the family editor, right? And I'm sure, Nick, that's probably one of the things you always tell your students not to do, right? Because it's generally discouraged. But with curves, you sometimes don't have a choice. In fact, it's sometimes the only way to get there. Well, now if I take this dimension and I label it um, with that rise parameter, okay, then now if I flex this, oops, okay, um, it will work properly, right? And um, that's really all that I need to do to get this arch working correctly. So this is suitable for a, um, a segmental arch, a Roman arch where it's a full half circle, or even uh, if you make this rise like really tall, um, you know, you could start getting into a more of a Moorish shape. Okay. Um, if you make this exactly half the width, it becomes a Roman shape. So, you know, the same construct can be used for many different shapes of arch, right? Now I'm going to close this and reopen it. 
because we started off saying it was gothic, right? Um, well, what you saw in there was my first solution to how to make a gothic arch, a, a gothic ar arch, um, uh, in Renaissance Revit. It was like, well, what if we just had some diagonals, and then we just basically did two segmental arches next to each other? So if you select this sweep, and you edit it, um, and then you go into the sketch path, you can see that I've created another parameter called segment rise, which uh, starts at the reference line, which is sort of like a baseline, and then just does that same trick to, to flex the curvature. So you can actually flex this uh, to something else, right? Whatever, let's do 0.3 or something, right? And it flexes on both sides. So you have control of it. Um, and then as far as how much of the triangle you have, that's just your simple width and rise here. So um, that was the solution I did in Renaissance Revit. And it works perfectly fine. And, um, you know, you can still do it that way. But I thought um, to kind of wrap this up, it might be fun. I kind of analyzed it again. And I said, well, really, another solution is to look at this and realize that if I've got an off-center curve there, I basically have an Avolo again. And what I really got is two Avolos next to each other, right? So if I delete all of this and we just apply what we did earlier, right? And we're running out of time here, so I'm not going to name these reference planes. I'll just I'll just do that and um, put a parameter here, right? And now if we do the same formulas that we did in the Avolo, uh, the center line is, or the center mark is going to be over here for an arc going this way, and the center line mark is going to be over here for an arc going the other way, and we get the same shape. We just approached it a different way, right? Um, but we can do the whole thing with trigonometry. Uh, so, uh, and again, the trigonometry tends to be a little bit more stable. So, you've seen me build all of that before, so I don't have to build it from scratch. So, let me open up the uh, uh, the one that I started. I think this one has all the parameters in it. Yeah. So here I've got all the same parameters. I even kept the same names just to not confuse anybody. Right. So we've got our radius again, our D, our H, D, our A, same formulas that we did this, you know, earlier today. Um, and then the only other thing I'm doing is I just went ahead and added an, uh, an X and a Y to keep the formulas the same. Um, but X is just half the width. So my user is typing in the width they want for the whole Gothic arch. And I'm just saying, give me half of that for the X. And then the Y literally is just equal to rise. So I could have changed the formulas to just say rise instead directly. But again, just to kind of make this part look the same as what we just talked about, I went ahead and um, and used the same formulas. Here, it's all set to default. So these are all instance-based and that's what I was talking about earlier. It could be either type or instance. It doesn't really matter, right? So um, with that in place, if I, I'll just do this with model lines. Um, if I draw the arcs, right? You can see we've got one right there and we can do the whole align and lock thing again. I don't, uh, oh no, I do have them on. Okay, I didn't see them at first. I was going to say I don't have the automatic sketch dimensions on, but I do. Uh, then let's just take this and mirror it. Unfortunately, when you mirror it, it doesn't mirror all the aligns and locks. So you do have to do those again, right? Someday, I hope they give us an option to uh, mirror with mirror and copy with. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it would be cool. So now if we flex the width, I don't know, let's do 1.5. We click apply, right? You can see we get a narrower one. We do 2.5. We click apply. We get a wider one. And the cool thing here is, let me just do this kind of uh, by opening up the uh, this version of the file. Here I did it with a sweep instead. Um, the cool thing here is it flattens out the bottoms, which I wasn't getting with the Renaissance Revit version. So if I open up the Renaissance Revit version again to compare, right? Um, I guess I still had it open. So let's do that. Right. Do you see how it's got little, little, uh, just because of the nature of the sweep, right? Because the profile is always parallel to the curve. So, you know, it's a minor difference there between the two and that, but that might be significant, right? So here, um, I, I kind of think I like this one a little bit better. 
Um, now I reached out to my good friend, Andy Milburn, who, um, I've known for years and is also very into, uh, heritage work and you should probably have on the show at some point. Um, and he did a lot of work with, um, project zone and, uh, the little crowdsourced, uh, Notre Dame project that uh, some of us were working on. And I asked him, did he know of any rules on the Gothic arches? Um, cause I admittedly have not done the same research on those that I've done in the classical forms, but, um, he tends to think that those proportions, uh, varied a lot more than they do in say classical stuff. Um, but we do know that they were, you know, that they were rules. Uh, it's just that they were a little bit more flexible. So sometimes, this proportion is a equilateral triangle. Sometimes it's a little more tall. Sometimes it's a little more wide. So um, it just depends on on the on the building and the design and so forth. But um, what I thought would be cool to kind of uh, finish this up here is if we load in one of those profiles. So hopefully I have some of these saved off as separate ones. Uh, there we go. That looks pretty good. And then let's take this and edit it. And instead of using a sketch, we'll just put in one of these. And let's see if that's going to be too big for the file. It might be. Let's flip it. I always put a uh, a scale parameter in there. That might work. Let's find out. Hey, look at that. <laughs> let's hide this. Uh, obviously, I would need to uh, to you know, reconfigure that a little bit, but it's not bad. Actually, I'm kind of upside down here, right? I don't. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually not a fan of face-based families. I think this one was face-based or, yeah, because it. Uh, I was assuming it was going to be attached to a wall. So, um so it makes it a little easier to attach it to a wall. Um, so for something like this, I would actually, I think I would prefer a wall base, to be honest with you. I don't think face based for like a window or door. I don't think it has, cause that's really where this would be used most of the time is over a window or door. So I think it would actually be better as a wall based um, family because then it would just attach right to the wall and, and you're done. Uh, face base can be challenging sometimes Um with the orientation or, you know, if you're trying to measure it from the floor, um, I mean, they have their place, right? Obviously. Um, and a lot of people really like doing all their content as face based, but I think sometimes the pros and cons don't outweigh each other. So I'm not, uh, I wouldn't say that I universally always do face based. No, I, I always think about it really carefully. And sometimes I, sometimes I just do a non-hosted family and I'll just align it, you know, like it's really one extra step. Like what's the big deal, you know, but, and there's different strategies. I mean, that we could probably do a whole session on just that topic. <laughs> you know? Sure. So. Yeah. So, sorry. Yeah. Like so some people in the chat mentioned my mic was muted uh, briefly. I just asked if the, well, as you could tell, oh, if yeah, the, yeah. The, the family was, uh, if Paul always used face base or not. 